Hey everybody! So, ISO 8 is out and it has completely changed the face of a lot of Strike Force teams and uh, synergies within the teams, how they work, and what we want to focus on. So, uh, my favorite team is, of course, Black Order, so I thought I'd focus on them first and talk a little bit about some of the decisions I made with them, why I made those decisions, and explain it uh, as best I can. But the thing is about ISO 8, there's not a whole lot of wrong decisions you can make with it. Most classes are going to benefit the character regardless of what you choose. But it really comes down to the pairings of things and how you expect the order of operations to work uh, as to how you want to choose your classes within a single team that you use a whole lot. So like with Black Order, for instance, I see a lot of people saying, you know, go Skirmisher with Procs and then uh, Striker or Raider with Corvus Glaive. Um, that way they both benefit from you know, one applying the vulnerability and the other one, you know, uh, capitalizing on it and doing the secondary attack, which is what you'd probably want Corvus to be doing since he tends to do more damage. He also has higher crit chance, so he's more likely to do more damage overall. Um, I haven't really been going with that because I've been focused on Arena. And with my Black Order, um, you know, they're pretty high now. Um, you know, I got a seven red Thanos and then six red Maw and then five red on uh, these other guys. And I'll probably buy a fifth on Corvus at some point if they continue to stay up there. Uh, I'm not sure how much that's really going to help though but what i wanted to focus on is how do we how do we win black order versus black order fights 100 percent of the time and instead of focusing on say war attacks which i think a lot of people have been doing lately with these iso8 videos that i've seen popping up here and there uh there's many other content creators that have discussed the basics and outlining how the system works and all that i don't really want to go into that because that's not really my style i want to focus more on the strategy within a team and why i pick these uh, certain types of classes and what they do uh, i think pretty universally uh, everybody says for Cole, you want to go Striker, and the reason why is it's just simply straight damage for him, and he can capitalize on some of those vulnerabilities um, if they're left out there. He is, you know, dealing what is it, 250% damage per counterattack with his passive. So the more damage he has, you know, right now he's at 20k. He's gonna be doing 50k damage uh, with those retaliations every chance that he gets to hit. So that makes a lot of sense. He'll be using that straight damage, even though he's not like, you know, a blaster or something that's gonna have a bit higher damage. He's still a big damage output with this team and absolutely worth it there. Some people may go fortifier with him just to keep him alive, but I've never had a problem with keeping my Cold City alive. I don't think that's the issue with him. A couple more yellow stars, sure. That would definitely help with his uh, survivability but I think it's more about you want him just dealing out those big big axe attacks in, uh, in in retaliation to knock off the squishies of the enemy team right so he's on my whenever I do attacks I often get kills on you know Ebony Maw or uh, Corvus or somebody with his retaliation so the more damage he can pump into those attacks uh, the better um, we're going to skip these two here. They're the most important, I think, and talk about these two real quick. So Maw, I think it's pretty universally understood that Skirmisher makes a lot of sense for him. The whole point is that his abilities will keep applying these vulnerabilities to uh, many of the enemy uh enemies on the field so it's it just makes a lot of sense to make him a skirmisher uh healer may be a secondary class that wouldn't wouldn't be a bad idea for him but you're just not going to get a whole lot of benefit from it because he doesn't do active healing right his his is a drain um so it's not going to benefit from the plus five percent or 10 or 20 or whatever it is at the end uh, if you get him to level five so i don't think he's really worth it to do healer um, the only one that I think that actually does need healing, and this is only for raiding purposes, which is why I have this currently selected, uh, is Thanos. He just has such a large health pool at over 400k health with 7 red stars. For me, getting that you know extra 5 or 10% uh, base heal on... Um, on turn right those are really helpful I, and you know he's also getting the 10 percent max health here um, so that's why he's over 400k but to me this is fine for raiding but i think for arena purposes i should probably flip him over to striker to get that benefit of the damage and potentially capitalize on that vulnerability although i think there is also a good argument for raider um, because the extra 15 percent crit chance while he doesn't have a lot of crit to begin with he's really only at like i think 10 percent base which is what everybody's at uh taking that up up to 25% can be really good because he hits so many people with his uh, alt and he does it three times over. He hits everybody three times over and his basic also hits multiple people. So there's a lot of opportunities for crit there. However, and this is the one thing about ISO 8 I'll comment on in general, these little, uh, these little, 
uh, ISO 8 th uh, thingies are very expensive. <laughs> and, um, you know, once you start getting a whole bunch of people fused up and, and you're using this currency, you're going to start getting getting crunched on those, those ISO 8 tokens. And uh, that's where I'm at right now. So I haven't switched them over yet. Um, I wish I could play around with it more. I wish you only had to do those upgrades once and then you just flip the classes as you need to. Uh, but it's not that way. So you have to pay for each of those upgrades on each class every time you switch. Um, but once you paid for it, it stays that way. So if I go from like healer to striker and then back to healer, I don't have to pay again for healer. But the, but the first time you upgrade to a level on a new class, you have to. And so that's where I'm getting a little bit crunched, so I can't do quite as much testing because I didn't buy any ISO 8, ISO 8 offers. Um, I'm just focused on doing milestones, dailies, and, and farming, right? Um, I think a lot of people are probably going to be in that same boat just because I'm a, I'm a little worn out on spending on this game, so I'm just not really doing it much. So in any case, uh, let's talk about Proxima and Corvus. So in any arena fight, um, when you want to be sure to win your Black Order versus Black Order matchups, especially in punch-ups, you need to get one of these two characters to 50% health before the enemy does. And the reason why is because if Thanos is passive, when he's empowered, he, does, uh, he gets 50% uh, um he gets the speed bar 50% and applies regeneration to himself and all Black Order allies every time that happens. So the idea is you get one of his buddies down to 50% health, typically Proxima, because she's generally the lower health pool of the two. And you get him to 50%, he gets that bonus 50% on the other side. He goes first in front of your Thanos and he flips buffs, then yours comes right behind him and flips them all right back and that basically wins the fight for you. That's how you see sometimes really big punch-ups with Black Order of like 150k. If you can get that turn meter to work that way, you're golden, right? You're gonna be, they're gonna be vulnerable, they're gonna have defense downs, they're gonna have tons of bleeds on them, and they aren't gonna have a great way of getting around it. So that's the idea is that you want to win that flip battle and then you're good. Because if you don't, and you have to wait another turn for it to come around to flip, uh, you may lose one or two characters in that time, and then you'll be at a real disadvantage. So what I've been looking at is how do we ensure that we get that flip to work in our favor? And what I went with, and this is a little counterintuitive to everything I've seen out there so far in ISO 8 recommendations, is going with Fortifier on Proxima, because she's always the one that gets targeted right off the bat. And the reason why is because she starts at 20,000 barrier, and then she's also going to give herself a little bit of barrier um, each turn, right? So she's going to get 3% here. Uh, it'll go up to 7% if I get her to level 5, but who knows how long away that is, <laughs> right? That's an enormous amount of materials. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But the idea is that we're saving her 20,000 damage. And when we look at uh, her health right now, it is 176,000 hit points. So that means she needs to take less than 88,000 hit points uh, in order to stay out of the yellow and, and give my Thanos the turn meter that I don't want and make him go first instead of the enemy. So the barrier adds another 20k to that, so they have to do 108k to me. So let's switch over here real quick to a battle I recorded. I'm fighting, um, if we look here on the VLC, where is it? There it is. So if you look here, um, I'm fighting the guy on the right. He has a 7 red Thanos with a healer class. It's not the damage class, so this isn't quite the best test, but it's the best one I could really find there, I guess. But anyway, he does uh, he does an enormous amount of damage. His Proxima is a little low, but uh, that's okay. So the idea is I just want to show like how close of a fight this is uh, in, in uh, what happens um, at the beginning of the fight. So we're going to 2x here, and I'll pause it uh, whenever she gets hit. But uh, I threw her in the middle here. This is not my normal configuration. I was just trying to give her the best chance of getting hit so that we can see the damage done. So they actually target Maw. They hit her for, it looks like 55K plus 20,000. So she does 75K to her on a, um, adjacent unit hit um ebony maw takes a little bit more damage at 96k and of course thanos he's buffed up like hell so he gets uh, only 36k damage um but you can see that and uh it's you know a decent amount of damage but it's not 88k right or 108k is what we really need and then right there you can see that proxima special also hit her 
and it only did uh, here let's check real quick it only did 28k right so 28k plus the 55 is actually below the 88 threshold right um, and that's ignoring the other 20k that they took off with the barrier but that 20k barrier actually makes a big difference because if I didn't have that she would have gone into the yellow there and then my guy would get turn meter and they would both be at a hundred percent turn meter on the Thanoses and then it comes down to a coin flip as to who goes first and in a lot of cases you've probably seen this before you lose that coin flip and then you're kind of stuck um, you got to wait a whole turn to go around you got to hope that a couple of your guys go back into the yellow so that your Thanos gets some turn meter and you can catch up um, if, but if they continue to focus the person that's already in yellow and get them down, then you're going to be down a player and potentially two. And that can be really painful. But that's what I'm trying to show here, because if I can guarantee that they always flip first or, you know, generally guarantee that they flip first, I'm going to win these fights almost all the time. Like, it, it's just that's the whole goal in this fight. So. With that said, I go on to win this fight. It's not a big deal. That's not the point of this video. But if I go back to uh, my game here, um, with this in mind and Fortifier assigned to Proxima right now, I'm actually setting my arena defense a little odder, right? So my Corvus is actually a bit lower health than my Prox, even with uh, without her Fortify. So I'm trying to hide him over here because nobody's going to hit Call with their first attack. Call and Thanos are the least likely to be attacked, but they might hit Maw and Prox. Maw is not going to go in the yellow because he's six red, so he's solid. Um, if you don't have a six red maw, well, then maybe you want to hide him on a corner or something. But with Proxima, you, you really just need to make sure that she doesn't go in the yellow and it'll screw up their uh, attacks. And so that's my thoughts for this is just trying to keep her out of the yellow and hope that when they attack, they fail on the, the first turn and then they have to go through that buff flip uh, recourse and, and trying to uh, knock it not get killed in the meantime while they're completely red and full of debuffs <laughs> so that's my thoughts on it i think um if you weren't going to use the fortifier on her i do think that skirmisher works really well with her because she's going to assist on those corvus attacks although i don't know how much you're going to do that every battle but it does make a lot of sense to have that interaction between her and um Corvus because they have the guaranteed assist so and that goes for any of those teams where there's guaranteed assists like of course you want like skirmisher on say like miss marvel and then her brawler team all has like striker or something right so she's going to apply all those vulnerabilities and the brawlers get to benefit from it so same thing here um, but for me right now i think it's just about keeping proxima alive and throwing a curveball at everybody because nobody else in my arena shard has fortifier on proxima right now and i was thinking about doing it with corvus too just to prevent either one of them going in yellow but i'm gonna see how this works and see how often i get uh, get knocked down and we'll see how this goes but that's that's my thoughts on it i think the rest is pretty straightforward and i also think it's fun to play with the different classes especially at level one before you invest too heavily in any of them because uh, remember even though level two is the same on all these different classes uh, the 10 percent health buff right you still have to pay to switch once you hit level two or higher, right? So if you go striker level two and you want to switch to healer and try that out, you got to pay to upgrade healer and then you can swap back and forth freely between the two. But you got to do that for every class that you want to try out. So definitely do your testing on level one and because uh, it's free and just see how it goes, especially with these uh, striker skirmisher interactions. Those are probably the most complicated in trying to figure out which one you want to do on each character and uh, what the team will benefit from most from so anyway i thought that was fun i thought it was an interesting uh a little little tidbit of information there and uh in less than like in lighter arena shards ones with you know not 500k plus black orders everywhere uh this could actually make a huge difference because at lower levels that 20k is going to scale a lot higher it's going to be more impactful because you're not always fighting a seven red max thanos um so it may make the difference between you know you defending and not defending a fight so just something to think about a little bit different from what everybody else is putting out there uh but that's generally what i do so <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this thanks for watching i'll see you later